Ghostbusters. The brave, the best, the only Ghostbusters. If there's something strange in your neighborhood, who are you going to call? Joe Blow, of course, to deliver another movie review, this time a look at Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. So in this one, the Spengler family, which again consists of Carrie Coon, Paul Rudd, McKenna Grace, and Finn Wolfhard, have relocated to New York City to fight ghosts and are living in the old firehouse from the Ghostbusters movies. Of course, they find themselves tangling with an old nemesis of the Ghostbusters, the now mayor, Walter Peck, played by William Atherton, who wants to shut them down for good. Meanwhile, an ancient evil will be unleashed over the city that will release all the spirits caught in the last 40 years. Oh my. So, I have to preface this by saying I was a big fan of Ghostbusters Afterlife. Jason Reitman's film skillfully blended nostalgia with a new take on the franchise that really opened up the Ghostbusters universe in an inclusive way. You see, it welcomed new fans without alienating old ones, something that the 2016 reboot notoriously failed at. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire seems like it's aimed to build the franchise out more extensively, which proves to be a mixed bag. While it's still a fun, nostalgia-driven return to the Ghostbusting universe, it's not as good as the last film and spreads itself way too thin to do the new characters justice. Now, one thing fans are excited about is that the original surviving Ghostbusters have more screen time and that they're joined by William Atherton's Walter Peck. Now, that's partly true. Ernie Hudson's Winston and Dan Aykroyd's Ray are part of the ensemble here with major arcs of their own. Bill Murray as Peter Venkman, however, still is turning in little more than a glorified cameo. His role is welcome but ultimately inconsequential, and one of the big missteps that the movie makes is that they never give him a great scene where he spars with William Atherton's character, which was so memorable in the first film. They cross paths here, but they never really tangle, which is kind of a missed opportunity, I think. That said, Murray still seems like he's having a lot of fun, especially when Annie Potts suits up as Janine towards the end, and it's great to see that the old gang still has that dynamite chemistry. But it can't be denied that they can't help but steal the thunder from the new cast when they show up at the end. Because you kind of forget about the new cast anytime the original Ghostbusters are on screen. And some of the new cast members really have very little to do in this installment. Finn Wolfhard in particular seems to have a limited role as if he was busy shooting something else with him mostly chasing Slimer around the old firehouse and barely figuring into the plot. The same goes for Celeste O'Connor and Logan Kim who return as Lucky and Podcast with the plot really stretched in order to explain why these Oklahoma kids are now suddenly in New York City. A lot of the new screen time is swallowed up by Kumail Nanjiani, who seems like he's being soft-launched as the potential star of his own spin-off, playing a hapless, ne'er-do-well descendant of an ancient family with connection to the movie's big bad, a spirit named Garaka, that can freeze people to death with the power of fright. Nanjiani is always likable and funny, and is certainly a super talented guy, but with so many characters, the under two hour running time is packed to the brim. His role, coupled with a lot of time devoted to Winston's high tech ghost busting organization, all feels almost marvelous in how transparent they are about planting the seeds for future spin offs, none of which sound like they'll be all that great, to be honest. McKenna Grace's Phoebe remains our de facto lead, with her going through some growing pains because she's being sidelined from the family biz due to William Atherton's peck and his machinations. Her subplot is the most affecting for the film, making me wish they had zeroed in more on her character, especially once she becomes involved with the tragic ghost played by Emily Allen Lind with a link to Garaka, who ultimately doesn't amount to much of a villain. I think they made a huge mistake here making the bad guy a big CGI creature. Because really, if you think of the classic Ghostbusters villains, they always had recognizably human avatars like Gozer and Vigo. Even Paul Rudd and Carrie Coon feel like they have less to do this time, as they've become kind of these idealized parental figures, as opposed to the more complicated versions they played in the last film. They had arcs of their own in that movie. Here, they just kind of go with the flow, although Rudd and Coon can't help but be likable and seem like they're having a blast of a time playing Ghostbusters. I do wish co-writers Jason Reitman and new director Gil Keenan did more for them, though. All that said, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is still entertaining even if it takes a solid hour of exposition for the film to really feel like it's moving. Gil Keenan does a good job directing, 
even if it really does lack the unique American graffiti meets Ghostbusters vibe that Jason Reitman brought to the last film. That one had kind of the touch of art to it, and this one just kind of feels like more of a run-of-the-mill studio film, although I do like that they're still using a lot of the old Elmer Bernstein themes on the soundtrack, along with Ray Parker Jr.'s iconic song. I mean, you can't do a Ghostbusters movie without... Another plus is that Ernie Hudson has his meaniest Ghostbusters role to date, which is some saying something. And the idea of Winston, Ray, and Janine, and Venkman all still being pals in their golden years are kind of touching, as is the idea here that just because someone's gotten old doesn't mean they have to pass the torch. These guys in this movie are Ghostbusters, and they'll always be Ghostbusters. They don't have to hand over their proton packs to anybody. Now, the film is being billed as a Ghost Corp production, which I suppose means Sony will try to make this into an MCU-style franchise. If they really want to make a spin-off, it would be amazing for them to do a proper Ghostbusters 3 focused on the now elderly original characters. Wouldn't that be amazing? Everyone still seems game, and if you let them do their own thing in another movie, fans would be thrilled, and maybe it would give the new characters established in these new films a chance to come into their own in a kind of Creed 3 style follow-up that just focuses on them. So, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is still a fun movie, but much more of a mixed bag than the original. I love the last movie, Ghostbusters Afterlife, but this one just kind of feels like it suffers from sequelitis, and fact of the matter, just isn't as good. But it's still passable enough. I give it a disappointing 6 out of 10. It's all dark and horny at 12 o'clock. Columbia Pictures has spared no expense to make this oh, a fine science fiction comedy what spectacle. What a bunch of good sports they are. And it is PG. Oh, I'm f***ing telling you, it's PG.